applications, we got to a point where um, this become a need. Um, kind of a quick disclaimer, um, a bit about me. I'm on the Checks and Data team, a team that does a lot of um, integrations with third-party providers. Um, kind of, we need some, some reliability there, uh, and also some, some soundness in our own environment. Um, one of the things that's not here and that I'm not uh, even pretending to be is DevOps or even know much about it. So just a disclaimer. Uh, and please don't take nothing that I will say here as a silver bullet that will solve any, any problems. It works for us. Uh, and it's a journey that we're kind of uh, taking towards um, kind of a, a sounder uh, place. So just a quick overview. I will be focusing on two things. Why and how you need to kind of have your, your production uh, replicated on development. So I guess some of you probably have already said this a couple of times. <laughs> And those of you that need to deal with these problems would probably ask something like this. Would say something like this. Because, you know, sometimes um, it, these, these kinds of problems are just amplified by the amount of apps that you have, the combinations that you have on, on the setup. So it's, it's really nice if you have uh, a Ruby or, you know, whatever app, just one app, with a very known setup, you can replicate the steps, you can do it. Once you go beyond that, it, it's, it, it becomes hard. Also, if you have a team of two, three, four people, awesome. If you have a team of 25, that can become really cumbersome really quickly. You will do support, and you will say this often. So this, um, this is actually from a talk from Joe Armstrong's talk called The Mess We're In. I just want to share some numbers with you guys. Um, so yeah, a C program with 632-bit integ integers could have the number of atoms in the planet. He gives this as an example on his 20, 250 gigabytes SSD. So yeah, I think it's a small number, you know, kind of. This is what it takes to find a, a computer with the same state. Uh, my question is, do you really want to add and to play with these odds? So yeah, what, you know, we don't have that many things to manage, you know, it's kind of it's different versions, Ruby of Rails, of you know, Node, we have package X, uh, JSONs, we have, we use also Elixir, so X packages, dependencies. Yeah, what can possibly go wrong, right? Currently, uh, and, and kind of taking on the step of the why, uh, this is not the, the, the global uh, kind of looks of what we do. We have a few other uh, apps and machine learning with well, other levels of complexity. This is the app that the team in Checks and Data works, the apps that we work every day, okay? We work with nine uh, Ruby, uh, well, nine apps in total, um, three services, okay? Um, probably adding some, some, some more in the future. Uh, we have two different versions of Ruby. We use two different versions of Rails. We're currently using Elixir 1.2.6, but we probably will be using soon also on, on another app 1.3. So, you know, on these applications, I uh, think, correct me if I'm wrong, six of them probably reside on the same space or where the original monolith that was split. Yeah, Three cool. of them kind of live completely separate on a different server, on, but all of them kind of intercommunicate. So this is just to give you the point of why it is important for us to be able to replicate the environment. Um, so, you know, picking a bit on, 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 on the testing presentation that, that we were kind of uh, given before, um, one of the things that we actually truly believe is that our tests should run as uh, seamless and, and in this um, kind of a, a similar environment to the ones that run on the CI. And that is not just, you know, the code itself. It's the operating system, the setup of, of the services that we use if we're doing end to end. So, um, yeah, we need to actually make sure that the environment is as close as, as possible and also when you do onboarding of new engineers, uh, new people, you don't want to be kind of replicating the setup and kind of almost, it, it, sometimes it looks like a kind of a voodoo dance, you know, some incantations that you say to expect that the machine will be in the state that kind of the guy from two months ago, hey, what, what have you did to solve this problem? Of course, we still find those issues, we still have to solve them, but we reduce them a lot in, 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 in the amount and the scale. So now a bit on the, on the how. Uh, so, yeah, we're using Docker on, on, on production. We moved from, from a monolith, those original six or five, six apps, from a Capistrano deployment on a VM, something like, it was easy, it was not that painful. 
but then we needed to move into kind of a, a cloud formation uh, style deploys, uh, CI, etc. So yeah, we're going to use Docker. So why not take advantage of it and use it also in in development? So because you know the thing is, you can speak about it, about the way you actually deploy them. If you use Kubernetes, if you use you know Swarm, if you use Fleet, whatever. The thing is, you have the Docker containers prepared. So Regardless of how you deploy them, if you deploy them here, even if locally, you'll get isolation. You'll get uh, kind of a rep replicability. Sorry for that. Uh, and and this thing for me it's quite important. Why would you just start one process or one app when it's just like this to start the full container? Once it, it, it has been brought to life, it's it's really quick. I, I'm not saying it's exactly the same kind of time, but it's almost the same kind of time. So why not start afresh with a full with a full environment? So regarding the, the replication of you know the, the, the production environments, um, as I said, we started uh, some some time now, and we started kind of with an internal tool called Bob, um, kind of an homage to uh, an operating system or kind of a prototype that Microsoft had. I don't know if you guys have been around for that long to, to know. It was very graphical, but you know, with kind of a dog and who do whatever you want. So hence the Bob name. Then. On the style of Jenkins and, and stuff, we made kind of a rewrite of that um, that tool named Jarvis. All of them internal, uh, none of them production grade. So development developers' pain was was yeah, it, it, it was it was hard. But even then, it, it kind of um, kind of alleviated the the, the, the the problems that we're feeling. And then uh, this tool, unfortunately, only needed and probably. Yeah, and available for someone using Macs. How many of you are using Macs? Just give an idea. Yeah, okay. For the other ones, sorry. Uh, you can go with kind of plain Docker Compose files. I will show an example afterwards. But uh, this tool um, is is quite 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 good for our for our needs. So the things that Dusty provides are apps, services, and bundles. Apps being your application, uh, the configuration that you need for I don't know your web portal or your API, whatever. Uh, in services, you probably fit something like Redis, Postgres, RabbitMQ, Kafka, whatever. Those kind of infrastructure services. Uh, they do have libs. We don't use them, and I don't know much about it. So, uh, And we also have bundles. And bundles are what allow you to compose the number of apps you want to start. Okay. So I will show some examples. I think it's, um, yeah, bear with me for a second, because it's probably will go wrong as, as most of the times. Sorry, guys. OK, cool. So just sorry for turning. So this is, um, I was mentioning you about, this is some of the applications that we have. Um, currently, I will show you. So this is the, I've prepared two, two bare bones applications, the Phoenix one, um, uh, kind of a Ruby with an AMI, and one using uh, Node. Uh, it's a, tool, a testing tool called Multibank. So just to, to kind of show you guys the possibility of deploying three different technologies uh, with, with, with Dusty. So this is the, the, configuration, the configuration that we have. Uh, we start by defining the repo, defining the, the mount point. This will be where your kind of code from the current directory will be mounted on, on the, um, sorry, um, so could you just increase the font a bit? So I will try this. <laughs> if it's possible. <laughs> okay, I think very, better like this? Uh, better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Cool. So um, the idea of the mount, it's we are actually sharing the code that resides on our on our machine. We are sharing it with the container. So this will be that, that directive for the mount. You can use a Docker, a Docker file in the... Um, in, in, in your directory to build the actual Docker image, or you can have a pre-baked one. You will just exchange this with image, and it will be it. Uh, there's kind of two different directives. There's a, a one called once, and it will do something. Uh, the first time you kind of spawn the, the um, Dusty, and this will happen every time you restart the computer. Uh, I was mentioning this with someone about my, yeah, my init that runs from it, and on it, it's a run for other time. Um, and then, okay, we, we declare dependencies. Uh, how many of you use Docker? Uh, kind of, yeah. So with Docker Compose, kind of organizing these kind of stuff can be really, really tricky. Um, well, <laughs> from a developer, plain developer perspective. 
Um, we actually kind of uh, use uh, these services, and I'll show them running. Same thing, port forwarding. So mapping the container port 9292 to T80 on my local machine, just for commodity, and then environment variables. Okay. <coughs> just to give you an idea, quickly, uh, the Phoenix app would be similar. I'm actually doing something here. We found the need of, uh, because we're setting up the database with C data, so we use this tool inside the containers to actually wait for the database. It will wait 60 seconds, or uh, there's kind of a polling time. It will become available soon, probably. Um, so yeah, this is just to show you guys a bit of so a bit of the configuration. Are the services uh, used in, in between the apps? Or yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I can, I can, sorry. I can, I can show you more about this. So these are the these these are the apps that we declare the configuration for the apps. Afterwards, we would use something like these services. Okay. Quite simple. Um, I would show you kind of this one. This is actually from our own repository. So that depends. This is kind of the, the seeding database that we use for our main app. But it doesn't prevent us to use another database. Um, yeah, this <coughs> one's even simpler. So then all of your apps use the same Postgres? They all data. use the same. It's essential what, what happens. And then this is an example of a bundle. A bundle is this. You just declare the, the applications that you want to get kind of uh, would it on start? Um, just to give you guys an idea, this is probably yeah one other project that we have. So it's kind of a um, so developer may have. A, a yeah, you can have whatever bundles you want. I will just show you an example. So a very very quick uh, walk through to Dusty. So Dusty will give you this. So repos. Okay. Yeah. So this is the the actual the actual repo where Dusty uh, gets his config. So you, you can have it overridden locally, or it can use master on any Git uh, repository. So I normally tend to have overrides here because I, I want to work with the local versions. But if you want to use it uh, with master development, whatever, you could. I think it's master by by default. Um, so yeah, this these are the the, the, the repositories that I have configured now. So if I show you the bundles, so it shows me exactly which one is activated. It's currently this one. The syntax is quite simple. It's dusty bundles deactivate name of bundle, dusty bundles activate name of bundle. Uh, and we have something like this. I've just to prevent some some issues I've started, uh, kind of, uh, I pre-started the, the, the environment. I can try to get to kind of tear it down and, and, and boot it up. Um, so what happens is this, this thing is telling me what, what is happening with, uh, with my, my images, my apps inside the bundle. So I'm having four services running, and I'm having three apps running. This is another commodity that uh, Dusty gives, gives for free. You get an Nginx instance set up in front of it to kind of route traffic to the applications. So this is kind of what, why I was saying I tend to prefer to do that instead of doing... This is actually the, the Docker Compose file that, uh, that Dusty will create because it uses Docker Compose. So yeah, the configuration that you saw with apps bundles is this one. You can write it. Uh, it's probably, I'm, I'm not mocking, it's probably the best way if, if, if you're using Docker native, uh, kind of the better for Mac, or using Linux, why not? It's not that hard, so, um, but, you know, it's, kind of, it's easier for us to use, especially since we all develop in, in, in Macs. Um, some other cool stuff that I can show you is, you can get, it's, it's nothing, nothing funny, so, yeah, this kind of shows what, what's happening. And, to kind of answer your question, um, so the services are here. These will all be used by the same. So Redis, Kafka, Rabbit, MQ, they will all be used internally and routed. So if you have another, yeah, any app that kind of declares, I think, I think we're using Postgres on both the Anami and the Phoenix app. So the service is exactly the same one. Unless you want to create another service. Uh, people are doing it for Mongo clusters. So it's kind of creating Mongo and then uh, Mongo 1, 2, 3, and 4 kind of grouping together. 
the other cool stuff that it gives you. So yeah, uh, I've shown you the, the build. Um, we have the build dot directive. Um, this is just a kind of a plain Docker file, and yeah, Dusty is here. It's a regular one. You can build it, or you can have the image prebaked and, and then run it. Uh, it will get um, it will get boot up or or at least started at the beginning and built once. You can force the rebuild, but it's it's quite quite fast on the second and third runs. It's really really fast. What I also wanted to show you is so this will allow you to actually from your app kind of inspect what's happening inside the container. At this time, uh, our Anani app uh, started, uh, we're using Monit, so we've started uh, web workers that are configured here by an environment variable, so we can, we have the, the ability of saying, fire one environment variable on the, on the, on the app config, we can say, run me four processes in Google, kind of four workers on one uh, it's, it's a cool way of kind of limiting your, your, your memory consumption. If you don't need that much power, um, but yeah, we can do it easily. And this is the log for uh, the, the Phoenix application. I can show you guys just quickly. Um, so this, these are the three kind of client-facing applications that we have. This is actually being run here. So this is a kind of a, a tool that we're just inspecting for for testing uh, kind of end-to-end. These ex this thing this thing kind of exposes two different ports. Uh, we can pass it kind of mocks and uh, and ask ask for those those results. Um, I was just showing this because it's a Node app. Uh, this one is a traditional Phoenix one. It, you you guys probably oh, sorry. I'm not I'm not prying on the logs. So if I'm here. So. Yeah, we have control in here. This one doesn't show the logs because they are being redirected to a specific place. And this is the enemy app running locally. What I will do, just to show you guys, is, yeah, this, these are the logs for the, the other one. I will just show you guys how to stop this. This will remove the images. So yeah, stopping and removing, and then when we want to start, you just need to do this and hope for the best. <laughs> so yeah, I can probably try to pry the logs here. So you guys can see what's going on. So okay, it's using the bundler config. Yeah, it's booting. Puma started, so we should start seeing good old Anami. Yeah, it was quick. Phoenix, by the way, it takes a lot because I'm actually compiling. You also get this web interface where instead of prying here, it's waiting for the database. Look, the one thing that I told you, it sometimes can take a lot because this, this image that I'm using is not pro it's not a simple one. It's actually using a 70 megabytes uh, SQL file. So, so yeah, it's available after 15 seconds. Seeding the database. The other one is, yeah, already up running the endpoint and it loads. So it goes, goes kind of from, from that, probably this one will take longer. Because, yeah, what you're saying, how long can it take an NPM uh, app to? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry for the rant. So who cool, guys, um, I'm kind of available for any doubts that you guys may have. Uh, feel free to ask and I'll try my best to, to answer. Docker for, te for your test environment?